Hey guys, MD Prepper here. Another knife review. This time on a more of a fun knife review. This is the K Bar Zombie Killer Line War Sword. Uh, if you've seen these, um, they're K Bar's new hot seller in their Zombie Killer line. They have got uh, four longer fixed blades, a small knife, and a little folder, which we'll be going all over all but one of these as we go through things. These things are a little bit pricey. They tend to average about 55, 60 bucks a piece, which I think is a little excessive unless you just want one for fun. I would not have ordered these unless I saw them recently on, I believe it was Amazon. They had a special deal. Uh, three of the fixed blades for about $35 a piece if I bought them together. So it was right at $99, I think, total with free shipping and all that for the War Sword the Famine Tonto and the Pestilence Chopper. So I figured, you know, for that price, why not? We'll try it out. So far, love it a lot. I um, have not had a chance to go out and use these too much recently. I've been a little under the weather. Uh, again, I thought it was a great deal for $35. 60 Maybe not. Uh, if you do not own a K-Bar, I would buy a K-Bar first. You must own a K-Bar for survival, camping, and everything else. Uh, K-Bar is the best blade ever, in my opinion, for the money would highly recommend that first. If you don't have one, get, get a K-Bar first, then go on to these. We'll talk about the accessories this thing comes with here in a minute. But the War Sword, coated in a non-reflective black powder coating, SK-5 steel. Uh, won't give a shine if you're using this for any kind of tactical purpose, that sort of thing. Uh, won't give you away. Comes nice and sharp. Pretty thick spine here on the back, so you could easily baton with this if you needed to. And with this length, you could chop like a small machete for brush, that sort of stuff, just fine. Uh, has a little bit of jimping here on the back. Don't know if I'm necessarily going to need that or use it. I don't tend to hold a blade this size like that, but it's there. Of course, full tank construction, as you can see, all the way around. It has these nice, cool-looking zombie green grips on it, uh, which I like a lot. Very grippy. That's kind of pebbling, kind of grip on that. Grip's real odd. Uh, not so sure how I feel quite yet. With my hands, I generally consider myself to have kind of your standard sized hand. I gotta put two fingers up front and two in the back for a good hold. Which is okay, it just feels a little odd at first. I, I don't know. I haven't quite gotten the hang of that grip yet. I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, it definitely brings my hand up real close on the blade uh, to get a comfortable grip. I guess I could also hold it one finger above the 12 there, but it's a little more chopper for some more wrist action, I guess is why that's there, giving me different options. From what I can tell, this uh, style blade was predated by, uh, before the zombie line. Uh, K-Bar had something called the Bacon Maker, which uh, is a cool looking knife that runs about 75 bucks a piece. Don't have one of those yet. Has these, almost looks like exact same style grips on it. They're just uh, kind of a bacon brown as opposed to uh, the zombie color. Of course, you got your lanyard hole on the backside. Uh, other stats on this thing, as I said before, it's SK-5 steel, uh, made in Taiwan, the blade anyway. The blade is uh, 9 and 3 quarter inches long. The whole little short sword here is 15 and 1 8 inch overall. So, pretty handy. Got some decent reach to reach out and touch that zombie. Good enough for thrusting, good enough for chopping. You've got a little curve on the inside there. Give you a little extra chop to it here if you need it. Now, other things this comes with, uh, as a bonus, has a tremendously amazing sheath. Love the sheath. Uh, it would be a wonderful starting point for a uh, bug out type survival kit, something like that. Uh, Cordura, two snaps up top. Also has a Kydex insert sheath down in there for your blade so it doesn't cut up the sheath, which I think is a tremendous improvement. Uh, cold steel, are you listening? Uh, you got two fixes, uh, fasters here. I'm not going to fasten that up right now. But uh, they're held on the back on this one, on the lower one, with Velcro. So you can actually take that one off if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to snap those on at the moment. Got your uh, belt loop hole back here. And you can also attach Molly style webbing, that sort of thing, that runs through the back side of this all along. You got three different sections. Three here, well, three by two, three by two, and Two by two there. Uh, you got your zombie killer emblem on the back side, which is very classy. That's a Velcro here for uh, some insignia, some flashing, that type stuff. If you want to dress this thing out, put your blood type or whatever on it. 
Now what's also awesome about this pouch, you got your drawstring here inside the pouch, which is very generous, very big pouch. You could put all sorts of nice little survival things in here. Um, fire starters, uh, Altoid survival tins, anything you can think of just about is pretty well going to go in here. Maybe another knife if you wanted to. Oh wait, there is one. This one comes with a little Acheron, a little skeletonized knife. Every one of the fixed blades comes with the Acheron free. The Acheron is a river to the underworld in the ancient Greek and Roman eras. Um, a lot of people will complain that uh, all this Acheron knife is a piece of junk, you don't need it, you know, zombie killer line that doesn't fit. Well, this isn't really designed for zombie killing, it's too small. This is designed for after you're tired from killing the zombies and you need to chop up some fruit or some bacon or, you know, something like that. You pull it out, don't have to worry about getting the, the blood and gore off your blade, and you got a nice little utility camp knife that's very lightweight. You can probably wrap this with some paracord. And what I think is interesting, uh, other than skeletonized, a little bit of jumping here on the back side, a uh, little zombie biohazard symbol there. This little knife was made in China, while the bigger one's made in Taiwan. Interesting. Now, in addition to this very nice sheath with your little secondary knife sheath on the inside, big pouch, kind of a zombie green attachment here, cinch things down. It does come with some zombie colored shoestrings. Uh, I would not call this paracord because it's not. It is just shoestring. It's green. You can use it for uh, leg attachment because you've got the holes down here. If you want to secure it to your leg, anything else you may want to use it for. Uh, makeshift cordage, that type of stuff. Hey, shoelace is better than nothing, but uh, I've done one better. I uh, went out and bought some actual zombie green paracord. Uh, Real 550 not a long paracord, the real stuff. Uh, a lot brighter than the shoestring. The shoestring stuff came in pretty pale. Uh, this actually fits the uh, grips a little bit better. I like the green on that. Cost me about four or five bucks. So, cute little addition. Have not dressed this thing out yet, but um, that's going to be a great starter for your family. If you've got kids that are learning on the zombie apocalypse and prepping and hunting and camping, this would be a great introduction. Get, good way to get them started. Um, you get basically two knives, a little accessory knife is what that one's for. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not a bad knife. I've seen some reviews. Anyway, K-Bar, ZK, Zombie Killer War Sword. Highly recommend you pick it up, especially if you can find it for cheap like I did. MD Prepper out.